Carl Rowland with Shoreline Products. In this video, we're going to go over how to mount your optical encoder and how to set the 80 thousandths gap uh, space between the optical encoder and the label that it's reading out. Okay, and when you receive it, this is your optical encoder right here. And it comes with two mounting screws, two 540 mounting screws, and you'll have an optical encoder bracket and a spacer block. Depending on whether you have a, a standard headstock or a 3C headstock, the spacer block will be different. So this is for our standard headstock. So these two go together with a 1032 screw, two 1032 screws that screw into the side of your headstock. The adjuster bracket has a slot in it so you can adjust the gap between your optical encoder and the optical encoder label that's on your pulley. If you look at the optical encoder label, it reads five points per revolution, five pulses per revolution, with the large one being for the zero point. That's for doing single point threading so it can start at the same place each revolution. With your optical encoder, it's got the plug-in right here that goes away from your pulley. You've got the two holes right here for your 540 screws and you just screw it into the end of the bracket. Get the one started, get the second one started. Then you're just going to secure these just finger tight, both of these screws, to secure the optical encoder to the optical encoder bracket. With your optical encoder, you get a shield for the optical encoder and you get a spacer gauge piece. This is 80 thousandths thick. The gap between the readouts on the optical encoder and the label has to be 80 thousandths in order to get the correct reading with your optical encoder. So we loosen the two bracket screws right here, and that'll allow the bracket to move up and down. We move it up, we put the spacer piece in there, and the spacer piece, one side's a little coarse, the other side is fine. Put the fine side towards your, your actual optical encoder. Then once it's there, then we are going to push the encoder down onto the gauge piece and then lock the screws in place. So we're holding it nice and square to that and we're going to lock these guys down. Okay, when you're done, it, sh it will grab a little bit. If it grabs too much, then loosen these up again and just readjust it. As far as a relationship towards the center of the spindle, with this spacer piece in there, that's, that relationship is already good. So the only relationship you have to worry about is the 80 thousandths gap between the optical encoder and the back of the pulley. Once that's done, what we will do is plug this guy in with the power off. Then the next thing we'll do is we're going to turn it on and we're going to make sure that the optical encoder is actually reading correctly. So right now I'm going to turn on my power. When I turn it on, the green lights come on on the optical encoder. The mass will control will come up. Password in. For this, I don't have to home anything out. What I'm going to do is go to the F1 setup screen. I'm going to click on that. Okay, I don't need to put a password in here either. Let me just move this out of the way. These are my readouts for my optical encoder. So if I turn my spindle by hand, counterclockwise, the same way it goes, you'll see the uh, signal A, signal B, and index zero lights going on. For each position, it'll tell me what position I'm at. So right now, I am at position two. Right now, it's coming. the signal A is going to low. And 
want to get onto the actual dark dot for, for position two, then both of those are going to go out. A and B are both go to low. It goes back to high again. I move to position three and it'll show three. And now I'm at five. So let's go through this again. Low. Okay, double low on number one, and it says two, three, four. When I get to five, and when I'm on the black dot, I get all low signals for the black for my for my zero position on it. So low, high, low, high, low, high. When it gets to position five, it actually goes to all low right there. So my gap is correct and it's reading correct. So I'm good with that. Now, something we found out by trial and error, uh, the lights that are on the optical encoder are LED lights. If you have fluorescent lights in your room, then the light there's not going to be any real light interference with the optical encoder. However, we switched to LED lights in our shop here, and we had all sorts of trouble because you're getting uh, interference LED light coming in here, which is making my optical encoder read incorrectly. That's the reason for the shield that goes over the optical encoder, and it just has a slot right here and a single screw, which is a pan head, Phillips head screw. And all you do is put it on, put it over the top of the LED and adjust it to the to a clearance point. It can actually touch the LED. It's not going to conduct electricity or anything. There won't be any problems with it touching it. And I just put it on nice and square. I actually bring it down until it's touching. I don't want it to rub on my label. So right about like so and then just snug the screw down and that's good to go. Uh, turn it to make sure that there's no rubbing anywhere. If I have a lever collar closer on the back of this, if this was a lathe, there is just enough room for this to clear with the lever collar closer on it. Now that that's in place, I'm gonna go to my F2 program MDI screen and right over here, I'm going to go to the blank RPM screen I'm going to punch in 1,000, and I'm going to go spindle start clockwise. And my spindle starts, and right up here is showing actual, showing programmed RPM and actual RPM. So right now, this is bouncing between, right now it's holding, it's like 996 to 1,008 is my variation in RPM from the called out 1,000 RPM. If I hit stop, it stops. If I go to the same screen again and punch in 2500, go to clock spindle clockwise, and again, 2500 was called out. It's going high, now it's coming back down, and it will settle out at about 2500. 2496 to 2508. And I just stop it again. So my optical encoder is, is hooked up. The space between the gap distance of 80 thousandths is set. Uh, my high and lows are both reading fine. My zero points reading fine. And after testing it, the RPM levels are good. So that's it.